When I look back over the last 15 dramatic years and reflect on the way in which we presented ourselves, both as a community and as individuals, the messages that we transmitted to our priests and to the laity, there is nothing that we have to be ashamed of, either written or spoken, in our appeals and invitations, because we remained faithful to the universal principles of the Catholic Church, which are principles that aspire to protect every human being. Now, looking back on everything that has taken place, the thing that stands out in my mind is the visit of a certain politician who said to my face amid tears, Your Grace, your diocese doesn't exist. Heavens, what do you mean it doesn't exist? It's been decided that it will cease to exist. What do you mean? We can decide that my diocese doesn't exist? We've waited so long for democracy to come along, and now in the name of democracy I don't exist? How come? Even during the worst times of the Ottoman Empire, even during communism, the Catholics still managed to endure here. That's what I'm here to tell you. Of course, this was something that I just couldn't accept. I must admit, at that time it disturbed me greatly. Afterwards, having witnessed everything, it became clear to me that this man was informed about a wider scenario, about the way things were set up. It was a scenario that was planned long before the war, about how to uproot the Catholic community from Banja Luka, I mean from Bosnia-Herzegovina. Bishop Komaritsa has his roots in an age-old Banja Luka family. They had been loyal to the faith of their fathers, rich in belief and hope. God had granted them the blessing of a prolific family and the gift of song. In that spirit of Christianity and joyfulness, Franjo was born in 1946. My parents were deeply faithful to their Christian calling. Prayer was fundamental and obligatory in the morning and at night. Family prayer. Sunday we attended Mass. There was no question about it. It was my mother remaining in the home who practically single-handedly brought us up. My father was busy at the railroad. I cannot thank God enough for having that sort of parents who loved each other constantly and gave us a rich example of interpersonal love and a readiness to sacrifice themselves for their children. His yearning for truth and his solid links with his family, especially his mother, are permanent and familiar features of Bishop Komaritsa and his life. It was precisely through his mother that the bishop came to play a special role in the life of Dr. Mustafa Sefic. I got to know Bishop Komaritsa under very special circumstances. I got to know him as a son. I had to operate on the cataract of his mother, it was then that I could see that this respected bishop is an ordinary man, a child of his mother. He demonstrated great concern and sensitivity towards his parent, as a child who had been well brought up, sometimes responding to even exaggerated requests of the elderly woman. It made a deep impression on me. It pleased me a lot because I too had a very patriarchal upbringing, and it made me happy to see such a remarkable relationship even when he was such an important man. But what made the deepest impression on me was the happiness and satisfaction that was evident when he saw that his mother could see again. And you can imagine my satisfaction too. In 1963, he completed his high school education in the classical gymnasium in Zagreb, and then theology in Innsbruck in Austria, where he completed a doctorate in liturgy. In the philosophical faculty, he was completing studies in music and anthropology. On his return to Bosnia in 1978, at the request of the Archbishop of Sarajevo, Father Marko Jozinovic, he was transferred to the seat of the Archbishopric in Sarajevo, where he dedicated himself to his work as a professor at the seminary. There, in 1985, news reached him of the Pope's decision to make him a bishop. 
I was really astounded knowing what communism was like. I was still very young. What does it mean to be young? Goodness, for that sort of responsibility, I really didn't consider myself qualified. In Zadar, news of the naming of Komaritsa as the new bishop reached his good friend, who today is Cardinal Vinko Puljic. I rejoiced twice over, firstly because it was my school friend that was chosen to be my bishop, and secondly because that responsibility wasn't put on my shoulders. But that second rejoicing didn't last very long. Soon that responsibility came to me too. Then, as the parish priest of Bosańska Gradiska, I had the honor of leading the ceremony for his episcopal ordination. The Croatian Catholics of the Diocese of Banja Luka looked on in fear when aggression against Croatia broke out only 10 kilometers from their border. In Banja Luka itself, the inhabitants, who were Catholic and Muslim, began to fear. The first abuses and murders began to take place. The Serbian nationalists who were in power began to mobilize everyone into their army. To refuse to mobilize meant automatic dismissal from your job, deporting from your home and further abuse. We were dumbfounded as we watched the convoys of tanks, cannons and ammunition lorries as they made their way past from Serbia and central Bosnia during the war in Croatia, driving death down there. So we organized prayer services in the parishes and in the homes of the people. We even managed to organize an ecumenical service here in the cathedral on the 1st of January, on the 3rd in the mosque of Banja Luka and in the Orthodox Church on the 6th of January. We organized joint prayer services against the war. I proclaimed loudly that even if God forbid all my Banja Luka inhabitants were for the war, I would still stand up against it. No to war. No to war. Let's hang on to the greatest treasure we have, our community spirit. Let's hang on to our city. Let's protect Banja Luka and hang on to the good relationships that we have. Even through the horrors of the war events of 1992, when many of the faithful suffered affronts, as did the priests and the church, still the bishop never lost faith that peace was possible. One of his closest co-workers can testify to this, Father Ivica Bozinovic. Bishop Komarica, as I remember him, and I was with him from 1992 right up to today, was firstly very thorough in the care of his parishioners. Wherever it was possible, he would go and visit them. That's a fact. He had endless patience in listening to them. And usually in the evening, when we would return home and we would light the petrol lamps, when there were power cuts, he would take hold of his old typewriter and he would write and write and write. He never got tired of writing protests. I don't know if there is anyone who played a role in this war who didn't get at least one letter from Bishop Komarica. And what is strange, even today it's strange, in fact I really can